Whew, what a night. What a night of college football, man. Let me tell you. Week 12 was insane. In all the greatest ways, you know. We, we thought, yes, I'm in a new location, if you're wondering. But, you know, in in the end, we, we, we were going to get something. Again, Cupcake Week in the SEC and the ACC. We knew we were going to get something. We weren't going to be sitting here starving, just eating on cupcakes. You can't eat cupcakes and expect to get your fill of college football insanity. We got our fill today. So, Thursday night, first things first, Tulane back in the discussion for the AAC. They knock SMU out of the discussion. Green Wave, they force five turnovers. Ty J. Spears had two touchdowns. Michael Pratt had six touchdowns. And it was just too much for the ponies. Too much. Too much offense. Not enough defense by SMU. And speaking of the AAC, guess who doesn't control their own destiny anymore? UCF. Unfortunately for the Knights, they let Navy run the ball. 63 times on them. You can't make this up. Navy only had one pass, and it was incomplete. And the Knights never were able to do anything in this game. In fact, they I think they trailed the entire game. Navy's defense has been unreal the past six quarters, and they did it again. They beat UCF again. As an as a what a 16 point underdog, again, they did this last year, they did it again this year. Really, really disappointing for UCF because they could have locked themselves, you know, a spot in the AAC championship this week, but now <laughs> you're gonna mess around and you're gonna find out. <laughs> like we're all going to have to mess around and find out what in the world's gonna happen in the AAC next week because we don't know at this point UCF has three losses now so something's got to give that big that big noon game TCU Baylor oh my goodness pure insanity we're talking Blake Shapin and the Bears were cooking the Horn Frogs defense all game long but yet Max Duggan Despite all the injuries that happened to several players, we're talking Johnston got injured, we're talking Kentry Miller got injured, we're talking, you know, we're talking guys were getting hurt. You know, Darius Davis was hurt too. But yet, Duggan and Sonny Dykes, their will to stay unbeaten, they, they keep it up. And it, it was the dumbest thing you will ever see in which, you know, TCU had the ball less than 20 seconds ago they run the ball somehow get their field goal team out there and kick the field goal and win the game you can't make this up undefeated by sheer luck undefeated by sheer luck TCU they are ever so closer to clinching a college football playoff spot for themselves it's also Illinois, Michigan. Blake Corum got hurt. Um, I believe he hurt like the back of his leg or knee area. He got hurt. And this Michigan offense looked putrid. This is the type of thing that we've been that I've been expecting at least. You know, I first thought you know it was gonna happen in the Penn State game, but this is the type of thing I've been expecting for Michigan all season long. You know, in in games that, you know, where they can be challenged and Illinois was up to be a challenge for the most part not in every aspect but for the most part Illinois was up to the challenge and forced Michigan to take field goals all day long and not touchdowns again Blake Corn got the only touchdown for Michigan and you know the Wolverines could not convert in the red zone at all and although Brett Bielema will cry and whine about penalties and yeah there were a couple of penalties you know, in you know, in this game, and like pretty much every college football game, there's going to be some questionable penalties. 
Illinois didn't take care of business when it mattered. You know, you know they had the opportunities to close this game out. You know, Chase Brown can't do everything for you. He had two rushing touchdowns, but that offense has to do more. You know, aside from Chase Brown, you can't just be Chase Brown each and every week. And Illinois didn't do what they needed to do on offense. You have to be, you have to be the bigger balls team. You know, you have to have the balls to go for it. And they didn't do it. You know, take the shots needed to upset Michigan. And they didn't do that. So, Rhett Bielema can cry and whine all he wants to. But, Illinois loses on a late field goal. So, it is unfortunate. George Travis, three touchdowns against Louisiana. I mean, that whole the whole team for the Seminoles was just putting in work, to say the least. Bryce Young had two touchdowns, and a new coming running back, Jace McClellan, he added another two touchdowns and over 150 yards rushing. And, of course, the Tide were able to take care of business. They shut out the Govs of Austin P, who will not be going to the FCS playoffs. We'll be talking the FCS playoffs later on this week. Kansas State took on West Virginia, and Will Howard had three touchdowns. There were back-to-back pick sixes in this game. And although the Mountaineers tried, they failed to keep this game close. Again, Will Howard with three touchdowns. Kansas State, you know, this was, this was a 28-19 game at the end of the first quarter, by the way. Kansas State is one step closer, just one step closer to getting to the Big 12 title game. They need to win next week against their arch rival in Kansas and hope for Baylor to do something against Texas. And they, and, you know, Kansas State is one step closer to having a rematch with TCU. Oregon State took care of Arizona State pretty easily. We're talking Damian Martinez. Had over 100 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Ben Branson, he also had two touchdowns. And this defense for the Beebs was on point. Less than 300 yards. They only gave up one touchdown. Too easy for Oregon State. We're going to have a ranked Civil War. And I know, some, I know it's not supposed to be called that anymore, but I'm calling it that. And a lot of people still do. It's the Civil War. It's a big one next week between Oregon and Oregon State. We'll talk about Oregon at the tail end here. Um, Boston College, they got shut out by Notre Dame. I'm telling you, this run game by the Irish, too much defense. They only allowed 171 yards. It snowed. You know, Notre Dame took care of business against Boston College. Took care of business there. Miami had less than 100 yards of offense against Clemson. Like, how do you let that happen? How do you not do anything against Clemson? When we're talking DJ Uilagalele had three touchdowns in this game. Clemson's defense again just showed out, showed up, and now they're they're in a better position than they were last week. And we'll talk about that. You know, Georgia, they took on Kentucky. We had the dogs, 16 points. That's not that's not great. But then again, Kentucky's offense is so terrible. Like, the defense for Georgia was just too much. Again, Kentucky only scored six points. They had nearly 300 yards, but they scored six points. Like, you'd, think, you'd think an offense that had, like, 300 yards would, you know, score more than six points but no Georgia with over 247 yards rushing too easy too easy for Georgia Ohio State on the other hand had a little bit more of trouble Lathan Ransom had a late fumble recovery touchdown Dallin Hayden he had three touchdowns in this game he had to step up step in and I mean the Buckeyes they stay undefeated barely it feels like 
this is the first time since the beginning game that they got tested. As Talia Takabailoa, he did his best. He got hurt at the end of the game, but he did his best to try and get Maryland over the hump because, again, they tested Michigan and they didn't get the job done. They tested Ohio State and, of course, they couldn't get the job done. So, Illinois and Maryland do not get the job done. And not only is the Big Ten West still a mess, we have we have the game being two 11 and 0 teams. It's going to be insane. Cannot wait for it. We'll talk about that next week. Obviously, speaking of Penn State. Nick Singleton had a kick return touchdown, another touchdown. Nittany Lions forced three turnovers. And I mean, the Scarlet Knights somehow allowed 55 points and did nothing to stop Penn State in this game. Uh, we'll skip over, you know, Cincy Lou. No, wait, not Cincy Louisville. I'm, talking, I'm, just, I'm like, wait, Cincy Louisville? Wait a minute. What, what, what am I talking about? What I meant to say was, is Cincinnati Temple, as um, the Bearcats, that defense, they forced four turnovers in this game, and I mean, it was just too much. Since he's still in the AAC race, which is good, really good for them, really, really good for NC State. Um, you also got Louisville upsetting NC State. Which, I mean, that's really not an upset, but did again. It is what it is. You know, Itzy State's technically still ranked, but whatever. I mean, does this even matter? It doesn't. It really doesn't at this point. Like, like, like this, this is bad, Itzy State. This is just bad. They're a four-loss team now along with Louisville and they just they just got bullied you know by Louisville's run game they got bullied no Malik Cunningham either in this game which is even worse for NC State even worse you, you lose to a Louisville team without Malik Cunningham just just unacceptable and speaking of North Carolina you know the whole state is just gonna have to be just sitting there salty because Drake May, he didn't have a good game. You know, Georgia Tech, that defense, they, they showed out when it mattered most because they were down 17 to nothing. They came back, had multiple backups in this game, and they won it. And although North Carolina's chances of going to the college football playoff were slim to none, it's now none two losses for the heels and that does not bode well for a certain you know Clemson Tigers team at the moment because that that does kind of hurt their resume a little bit you know North Carolina obviously they they won the coastal division they can still win the ACC but you know the slimmest of CFP chances go out the window in the evening, oh boy, how do you make Spencer Pratlow look competent? We're talking Tennessee allowed this man to throw for six touchdowns. And the Cox put up 63 points on the Vols. They only punted once. Just once. Hendon Hooker, he had, a, he had a great performance yet again, but he got hurt late in the game. And although Tennessee had, you know, the opportunities on defense to make stops, they just didn't make the stops. And now the Vols, they are definitely eliminated from the college ball playoff discussion. You know, best win is Alabama. And LSU. But you can't win the East. 
can't go to the SEC championship. It, it, it kind of sucks. Kind of sucks for Tennessee. You know, some people are already like, oh, well, we were the 12 team. No, 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 no. I, 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 I've stated my case on how I think, you know, the college football playoff should be at various points. And right now, Tennessee would not be one of those teams. You know, probably not. You know, like they'd be barely on the cusp. You know, they'd be like the last team in or something like that. But, you know, if it were like an eight team playoff, sure. You know, they and Clemson would be the last two teams in right now based off of what has happened tonight. But if it were like a 12 team, okay. Tennessee would perfectly be fine in, which I, I just don't agree with. You know, Tennessee fans were getting all uppity and, you know, this and that all week long. And then they, that defense, they showed up in the worst way. You know, where was this type of performance against Missouri, you know? You know, like, like the performance against Missouri. Where was that? Not there. I don't know, man. I don't know. Tennessee, unfortunately, they, they, they blew it. Plain and simple, they blew it. Speaking of, you know, Alabama's only good win, that took a hit. Because I told you, K.J. Jefferson, you know, he he's a difference maker. And he returned three touchdowns by him. Raheem Sanders also had three touchdowns, over 232 rushing yards for him. And the Hogs defense smothered the Rebs, forcing three turnovers. You know, Ole Miss didn't do anything until late in the game. It was it was a wrap when it was 42-6. to And Ole Miss, a promising season, you know, this team... Had probably had aspirations of you know being undefeated, and look at how quickly that went. What three of the last four or five games they've lost? Wow, wow. Bethlehem was important, you know, in the you know in the race for the Big Twelve title. And although Oklahoma is bowl eligible, this game was absolutely terrible. If you did watch this game, my thoughts go out to you. Because I, I, I don't know why you watch this. Spencer Sanders threw four picks in this game. The Sooners scored 28 points in the first quarter and did nothing the rest of the game. I don't get it. Oklahoma State is eliminated from Big 12 title discussions now, so that's why, again, that's why I had this game highlighted as important, because I couldn't think of any other games that were important. And guess who that helped out? Guess who this game helped out? It helped out Texas. It helped out Kansas State. The only two teams left in the discussion for the Big 12 title. It comes down to next week in the Big 12. Oh boy, can't wait. And then the showdown in LA. Oh my gosh, what a game this was. Caleb Williams, the Heisman front runner. 500 yards of offense, three touchdowns. Inconceivable. This Trojans defense, although they bend because they let DTR. Put up six touchdowns on them. They do not break because they picked them off three times. They took a fumble away. Again, USC's defense is notorious for taking the ball away. Best team in the country at doing that. And, you know, this game was insane. 1,100 yards of offense. And yet USC beats UCLA and gets to go to Vegas to go win a Pac-12 title. Now, USC's job isn't done yet in the regular season because they have Notre Dame. But the fact that Lincoln Riley 
is going to lead this USC team to Vegas to potentially win a Pac-12 title in his first year is insane. I don't, I, again, USC was on like on the lower end of CFP contenders at the beginning of the year because again, I I did not think I uh, think a lot of people didn't think they were going to do it. You know, but they are one step closer. They have two games left now for realsies. So it's going to be interesting to see how next week goes for them. We'll see what in the world can happen, you know, next week. Because, again, the Notre Dame game is big. LSU took care of UAB. Jaden Daniels had another 400-yard performance. Noah Kane had three touchdowns in this game, too. So, you know, that's all good. So, LSU... Just one more win, and they'll have a 10 win season. And that may or may not be easy, you know, depending on which Texas AM team we get. Colorado is absolutely terrible, like Michael Panix and the Huskies. They put up 575 yards, 54 points. And yes, Washington is still technically alive for the Pac 12 title because they beat Oregon, who beat Utah, and they beat Utah by picking off Cam Rising three times, Ducks turned it over three times themselves, but hey, when you have Bo Nix putting up a gritty performance like he did in this game, which he didn't run until, you know, the very end of the game in which the Ducks needed a first down, you know, it is what it is, so, Oregon puts Utah out to the curve in the Pac-12 title race for the most part. I don't think Utah has enough leverage to get to the Pac-12 championship at this point. It looks like the race is going to be between three teams in Pac-12. Oregon, USC, and Washington. And we could get a smorgasbord, you know, of good matchups, you know, well, there's only two potential matchups because USC has locked it up already. I don't think we're going to get the Utah-USC rematch again, you know, or could beat Utah, and now UCLA is a three-loss Pac-12 team. So it all comes down next week in the Pac-12 as well, you know, not only for the title game, but for the CFP hopeful in USC so it's all gonna come to a head next week cannot wait for it man what a what what a what a week what a week of college football we get to do this one more time before conference championship week one more time for the craziness for all the marbles and we're gonna find out a lot of things next week because we have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Cannot wait for it, man. I am I'm excited. Some teams are still fighting for bowl eligibility. Some teams they're looking to, you know, cement themselves because, you know, there are seven teams remaining in the college football playoff discussion. Just seven. You know, it's going to be Georgia. It is going to be Ohio State and Michigan, TCU, LSU, you know, Clemson, and, you know, that's basically it. You know, you got Michigan, you got Ohio State, you got Clemson, you got Georgia, you got TCU, you got LSU, and USC. So, yeah, that's... Six, right? Yeah, it is. I'm, si I'm sitting here silly. Yeah, so six teams are left in the discussion for a CFP spot. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all goes. We don't know what the group of five is going to look like. Still, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a sun belt a sun belt team ranked. Please, I would like that. You know, we can 
we can get one of those teams ranked. That would be nice. You know, when you have again, so yeah, because the AAC is still kind of a mess. You don't know what that's going to look like. Some belt needs a team ranked. Like, we don't know. You know, there's several different combinations. You know, of when Michigan, Ohio State is cleansing a factor. Georgia, LSU being a factor. TCU, USC. You know, things are getting wild. And it seems like, you know, I've made my determinations for the top six games next week as well, for the most part. But, you know, we'll find out everything as this fan continues to get on my nerves. We'll find out everything as you do. So, let's see what the rankings on Tuesday look like. And, you know, we'll come back and talk once again on on Wednesday night or maybe a little earlier it depends I do want to try and get this out earlier this again there's all it's this technically is Sunday now so technically feast week begins in college basketball so you know it's gonna be a weird Thanksgiving week let's hope for the best We've got a lot of stuff to go over this week cannot wait to talk to you all throughout this entire week I'll see you tomorrow. College basketball stuff, you know.